Hi guys, um, Adam Crowder here from the student experience team. A um, bit of a different, I'm on episode 5 of the Common Room Live and uh, we've got a bit of a bit of an outdoor session planned today. So, um, kind of an active lunch today, so putting the laptops away and uh, trying to keep balance in your in your daily routine, I suppose. And uh, we've got a very special guest today. We've got we're going to be joined by uh, Jordan Crowder, my brother, uh, also a fellow staff member in DBS. So I suppose we're going to catch up with him, see how he's getting on, um, what he's been doing, and um, yeah, just to mix it up, get some staff members involved, and I kind of catch up and see how life is uh, from working at home and so on. So. Um, Perhaps you're out and about as well and enjoying your day. Um, as I said, it's an absolutely beautiful day here in Dublin, so it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity to get out and get some fresh air and um, get some physical activity into your day as well. So uh, that's what we're trying to encourage uh, during this episode. So disconnect from suppose, your studies or your work or whatever you're doing and uh, you know reconnect with someone through technology and get your steps up or some, uh, some uh, physical work done and so on. So gonna invite Jordan in now and um is a fellow fellow DBS legend. Uh I think he's Jordan's working in DBS I think around four years and um he's working in international admission so a lot of you international students uh, Jordan would have processed the visas for uh, their general applications as well and would have I suppose brought you into DBS so there he is now the main man. How are you Jordan? <laughs> I had to wear a hat so people could know who who they're talking to. So distinguished between the okay, two of so. us. So. <laughs> so Jordan is the one with the hat. Adam is the one that's yeah. Have that. <laughs> which is which is, a, which is a a regular a regular mix up between the two of us. But <laughs> unfortunately, no, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us, Jordan. And I was just saying to the guys, well, today is just to get out and get active during your lunch break and uh, get some physical activity under the belt and break away from the monotony yeah. of the. Uh, of domestic working and uh, remote working type thing. Yeah, 100%. So, um, yeah, it's good to see. Anyway, how's the connection? Look, okay? Yeah, it's not too bad. My side is it okay? Yeah. yeah I don't know, I'll just get a lot of blur down by your chin. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, The lockdown's hit me hard with the shave, and so it's. Well, send us your even. comments. Who looks like the lockdown has hit them harder? Uh, Jordan <laughs> or me? So. Uh, <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> but no, I suppose, um, I suppose, what have you been up to? How are you getting on? I'm sure a lot of people um, want to know how you're doing. Yeah, grand. Um, obviously, I'm in the weird position of being a, a staff member and student, like like yourself. So it's a, uh, it's a bit of a strange one, like. But um, no, it's grand. It's it's just um, I think at the start of it, working from home, it was tough. Um, it was a bit of a struggle, like do you know what I mean, like trying to adjust them because. I'm a huge creature of habit, so I know I have to be at a certain time every day with work. Like whereas um, with we're kind of working on, I, I, I thought it was going to be easy. It was like you just kind of slip into routines, but it just was. It was really, I found it really, really hard to start. But um, you kind of get used to it. Then. You find your own routines, even if you're at home. Like do you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's grand. Like I've enjoyed. It. I've, I think I've enjoyed it too much now because um, I think it'd be hard to go back to work. Back to the daily well, grind, the, like do you know I mean, but you know, that's the thing, that's gonna be the next transition, you know, as well as it's changing back into normal, normal habits, I suppose, of working in, in um, um, sorry, this the, the Wi Fi is that they're going down a bit. Can you hear us, Jay? You gotta love. It's definitely Jordan. So, um, but yeah, as I said, we do have Jordan. Um, Adam, how long is this? Is this all? How are you? Hey, Depeche, how are you? Um, if anyone does have any comments for any questions for yourself or Jordan, uh, please feel free to fire them into the into the comments box below, and uh, we'll we, we'll ask them. But um, as I said, we'll be catching up with Jordan just about how he's getting on. Um, Jordan, as he was saying, is a fellow, uh, you know, is, is a, obviously a staff member. But he's also a part-time student too. He's studying the MSc in digital marketing in DBS. 
and um, he is also a radio presenter also, so he has his own radio show uh, at the weekends and in some evenings, so uh, we'll be catching up with him about that as well, so looking forward to uh, finding out about, you know, that part of him as well, so it should be, it should be interesting. So, um, I don't know what happened there. You're okay. <laughs> you got to love live TV. This is it, live TV, don't work with animals or children. So I went into education. Um, no, it's... Um, just a quick question then, I suppose, yeah. um, like we're just chatting about uh, you know, domestic life right now. Um, I suppose before we kick off into DBS life, you've been doing, uh, obviously, a lot of home stuff and you've been in complete lockdown for, you know, for a while. Uh, you've been doing online exercise classes as well, have you? Have they yeah. yeah, so the gym that I would go to regularly, they... They close like everything else, so I've been doing um, online Zoom classes, and I thought, like, oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be brutal. Like, this is gonna be painful, but they're actually really, really good. Like, they're, you think like there's only so much you can do, but they're quite dynamic, like in in a way. Like, and then we get sent uh, other stuff we can do ourselves. Then, so yeah. even the days the Zoom class sent on, you can work out yourself. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so you can get that good balance with it, like do you know what I mean. But and I try to do more running. I'm terrible at running. So bad at it, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah you still think you can beat me in a race, which is still funny. I could, like, you know, I could, I could flatten you in a hundred meter sprint, no problem. I don't know, no problem. Still, for this day, I, I still think I take it now, like, you know, Adam. I was 14th, I was 14th in the under 15th at Sandry, like <laughs> in Dublin. So, <laughs> no, I'll we'll we'll, 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 let me record speak for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, come here, um. And I suppose, have you any funny stories from, from, from exercise in the home? Any, any, any failures or any fails or anything like that? Like, you know, or has it been straight show? Um, no, it's been pretty grand. Like, it's just the only the only problem is that, like, we have a good, like, I do them at the back because there's more space. But I'm more conscious yeah. of, uh, of like, people just, like, looking in and going, like, what is this Egypt doing? Like, but other people are doing <laughs> their back. But the only one problem with it is that we have, like, a small patch of grass at the back. It's like a little okay. square. Back garden's big enough now, but like there's a little square patch of grass that we only have, and it's fake grass. But I was doing a class, and like bear in mind, everyone can see on the Zoom, and as I'm there squatting and jumping around, whatever, like that dog starts taking a, a poo behind me, like do you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, none the wiser too. And then like we were doing we were doing bear crawls at one stage, and there was just there was just like little plots of poo everywhere, and I was like, but I was like had to bear crawl around it, like do you know what I mean? Like it was just like so it was like. Like one one could say like it was an added obstacle like you know what I mean like it kind of enhanced the workout experience because then who needs cones when you have dog poo on the ground do you know what I mean like yeah, well, <laughs> yeah you got you got to love that's what's great about the the Zoom sessions and the live stuff there's, like there's no there's no hiding from like you know which is which is great <laughs> that's the only problem like you know what I mean you can see the people who are dedicated because they leave their cameras on it's like someone uh. It's like the online equivalent of wearing like a vest to the gym. If you leave your camera on, you know you're dedicated. If someone wears a vest to the gym, it's like this. This guy knows what he's doing. Like, do you know what I mean? So yes. Yeah. You can see the dedication. Like. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose just tell us a bit, a bit about your job and the your your role in DBS. Or anyone that doesn't know, I know a lot of them would know me from front face and kind of staff in in the student green team. But yeah, uh, what's your role in DBS? I don't so, just know. So I I work at doing at uh, I'm an administrator for the for the international students. So anyone that's non EU, um, would basically who applies to DBS would come through me. So I would look at their application. I would assess if they're uh, eligible or not. Like so, um, it's it, it's it's a very different job. I'll give it that because it's like every day it's, it is very very different. Like you're dealing with people who are, um, you know from all over the world so you're dealing with people's grades from different countries you're dealing with people's like id from different countries and like mm. and even at that like culturally it's it's the difference is how people are how they how they kind of come across to how you come across to them sometimes and so it's it's it's, it's great it's all it's always different like and it's kind of you really get a bit of a it's just kind of in a, in a stupid but weird but i find it kind of funny way like you, you get kind of excited when you get someone from a, a country you've never dealt with before like the biggest mm. countries we deal with will be like you know India, Nigeria, uh, Pakistan, then Brazil, um, stuff like that, Mexico. But then you get like I had a student apply from uh, Eritrea before. I had a student apply from what was the other place? Jamaica. Like do you know what I mean? And you're just thinking like there's someone they're sitting at a computer probably in their own country going Jesus, 
might go to Ireland. Like, you know what I mean? You're kind of thinking, yeah. like, the thought process. Like, how, how do they land here? Like, how do they land in front of me? Like, you know what I mean? So it kind of makes you think like that. Like, you know, what made them stop and go, Jesus, I'm living in this paradise. This place is with nice weather, probably nice people. I'm going to move to Ireland where, the, where it rains all the Well, unlike today, like, it rains all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it's... It makes oh, you think right. like that, like for anyone tuning in from Jamaica or the Caribbean, yeah. anywhere nice like this, this is what it's like in Ireland every single day. So it's, every uh, single very, day, very tropical. Uh, <laughs> well, no, yeah, that must be very interesting. And I suppose you've been, you know, processing a lot of applications and for for students looking to enter into into yeah. in, in, into DBS, which is which is interesting. Um, like it's uh, mad. Um, uh, it must be mad for you because you you like you're the one who initially sees them coming through or applies them coming through. But the um, it must be mad uh, graduation day seeing them kind of graduate. I think that must be a, a mad uh, you know feeling for you. Yeah, like it's process. actually it's actually funny. Like it, 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 it's mad when you actually meet the students when you're you're dealing with students for because with the international student it's a longer game. So you're you're dealing with them because of visas and stuff like that, and then all these documents and stuff like that. So you, you're playing it, you, you, you do kind of have a lot of uh, touch points with them, like, you know, I mean, you're speaking to them a lot, but when they actually arrive, like, it's happened to me a few times when I'm at registration, and I meet a student, and they're like, oh, where's this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's there. And they're like, oh, are you Jordan? And like, yeah. And I go, oh, this, it's so-and-so. And you're like, and it's weird putting the actual, like, you've seen their picture, but when you actually put a face to the name, you're like, Jesus, it's it's mad, like, seeing them, like, in, in, in person. Like, so it's, that aspect of the job is, is a bit, um, yeah is a bit mad like you know what I mean but uh, yeah no it's, it's 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 interesting seeing people like and stuff like that like what about the people who think you're actually a girl as well what do you think Jordan is a girl then what's the funniest thing about that is is how regular that happens it hasn't happened to me in a couple of in a couple of weeks now <laughs> but I've had students laugh in me face I've had I've had students over email go oh you're a man I'm like yeah my name is Jordan it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a man's name and then you get some students that are um, that are like uh, I met a student in person at reception, and I went down and I was like, "Hi, uh, you're looking to speak to Jordan's myself," and they're like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Yeah," and they're like, and they see the beard, and they're just like, "You're a man." And I was like, "Don't have it taken back." <laughs> and we had we had an agency who we work with in Nigeria who came over, and uh, I went in. Uh, the admissions manager for international brought me up to meet her, and I've dealt with over email for 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 probably a few years. Mm. And I went in the office to meet her, and obviously no one alluded to the fact that I, like made my gender, like whatever you want to look at it. And uh, I went in, and she like broke her broke her heart laughing at me, going, "Oh, you were Jordan." I was like, "Yeah." It's like, "Oh, you're 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 a man." And I was like, "Well, last time I checked, I was." So yeah, <laughs> and it was just funny. Like you know, most people get offended, but I I just think it's funny, like because like it's I I don't I've. It's never been an issue until I started working at TBS. But. For anyone who maybe doesn't, no, obviously it was just tuning in. Me and Jordan are obviously brothers, and uh, my <laughs> my name was actually meant to be Jordan, but uh, our, our, our father had a had a, a line manager that he didn't really like at the time, and his name was Jordan. So uh, he uh, the second go of, of his son, I, I suppose, was was left to actually Jordan. So uh, you, you're you're bearing that cross now, Jordan. Unfortunately, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, um, I suppose we, we chat a bit. Uh, uh, thanks for all the information about you know, um, about DBS. But we want to chat about working from home. How have you been coping with working from home? Um, yeah, how are you? Yeah, been like um, it? like I said at the start, I I I, I struggled with it at, at the beginning, and I think it was because I I've been like, and you you know yourself. Maybe I get it from from you from seeing you. Like, I, I'm a very kind of active person, like during the day, and so I'm up quite early. And I have a lot of kind of things like I, I do, you know, the gym most evenings. I've um, I volunteer in radio station as well, like so. And then I, I just just stuff like that, like so. I, I had all, and then and of course I'm doing my masters on top of it in DVS. So I had all these things, and the next of all, it just went boom. Everything just stopped. So yeah. I couldn't commit to do more radio stuff. I couldn't commit to do more gym. I couldn't. The only thing I kind of kept going was the masters. I still had work to do. I still had stuff to hand in. So. I was just yeah. doing normal work and college work, so it was tough at the start. But um, like DBS has been great because like they, you know, they they literally said like, what do you need? What's needed to work at home? And it was just yeah, a laptop, and that was it. Like I have a desk, I can work from home. But um, so they've been good in that regard. But I think the kind of the fact that everything we do was taken away from us and it's like working out and stuff like that. It was that tough transition. It's great now, like you know what I mean. It's just it was just kind of that initial, and because it was unknown territory for everybody, like you know what I mean. So it's it's across, it was across the board. Like it wasn't just uh, 
just me, like, do you know what I mean? So, but, um, I know, have your coach kind of learning a lot. Like, obviously, I know there was only kind of four or five weeks of, uh, of, your, of your program left remaining, uh, but, but how yeah. have you coped? Great. Like, I, I think, again, I'm in the unique position in, in because um, the course I'm doing, I'm doing the MSc in digital marketing. I'm into my dissertation now. But there's only four people in my class. So, uh, it's, yeah, great, um, yeah. so like, we, we were the first group to do that course part-time. So, we were kind, we're kind of the guinea pigs. So, um, so we, we kind of got good attention off the lectures. They were able to kind of give us all individual time as well. Um, so, that was pretty good. Um, so we're in that unique position, but um, I didn't mind it. Like I actually really enjoyed it, like because it, it meant I can work at my own pace, and the lectures weren't fairly um, hard on us. Like we obviously attended every class and every online session, and um, because obviously it's your last semester, you have to give it a hundred and ten. But um, yeah, it was grand. I, I, I actually I actually really enjoyed it, and I think because I'm part time, that probably helped it. Um, and yeah. I'd like to see how the the, the full timers adjusted to to. to yeah, to part, to it's online kind of study. Mixed, mixed feelings like your students yeah. obviously you know not used to that type of learning and that type of independence and you know um, yeah. so that's, that's a period of that but um, if anyone has an opinion of the online learning or how they've struggled or how they've enjoyed uh, do, you know, do come in the, in the comments box below and we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll maybe discuss that a bit more but um, yeah. I do have a question here have you Attended any of your online classes or worked from home in your in your PJs? That's that's a very serious question. Uh, you have. To be honest, I feel like if you don't work from home in your PJs, you haven't really worked from home. Like you're kind of cheating. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. You, you, it's no better. Like you know what I mean? It's it's you have to do it at least once. Like it's it's like uh, what was it? When in Rome, do as the Romans do. When you're at home, working your PJs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's there was, there was a week. Day. There was a week where I did. You didn't get dressed. Bed. I did. Yeah, I you know. I, I genuinely between nine to five, I stayed in bed, like on my bed, and just like used the laptop. And after about a week, if I went, no, I was like, I can't do it. Like it's. Yeah. yeah. You just because you knowing you're leaning and you're like kind of and your arm gets sore, and all you do all day, you just change an arm side like to lean on. Like it's it doesn't work. Like it's 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 not worth it. Like not at all. Like. And are you keeping a regular routine yourself? Are you are you going out for kind of walks and your lunch break like this, or do you kind of you know walking through, or are you kind of how are you breaking your day up? I think because obviously no. you know, in town there's plenty of distractions and plenty of kind of things yeah. to do on your on your lunch break. Uh, you know what are you doing to kind of break I'm doing up your the day? opposite actually. I'm 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 actually skipping my lunch a lot of times. Okay. It's weird, yeah. like, and I think that 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 boils down to the whole thing. People working from home that you feel like, uh, and I'm not trying to like big myself up on skipping lunch or anything like that, but. I just find myself not bothered with it, but I am moving away from my desk a lot more. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to make cups of tea and I'm just stretching and stuff like that. But, um, like, yeah, no, I, I find myself not even taking the hour. I'm just kind of getting bored and just going back upstairs and just doing work. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's... And I suppose and it's, that's uh, the very essence of what today is about, you know, for any staff training and our students as well, that I think a lot of the day is becoming great for, for, for individuals. So it's important that you're... Unless you're setting a calendar aside and taking that break and taking it, yeah, taking a breather type thing, like you know. So um, I think that's, no, it's a big problem with myself is is that kind of, and I think it's because I'm working and that's the room I sleep in as well. Like do you know what I mean, so it's like it's trying to have that separation. I think I need to kind of have maybe maybe have done that separation a bit better, but you know, it's you live and learn, unfortunately. And do you think you've literally, I suppose, in that bread as well? Have you learned anything about yourself during this? Do you think? During the pandemic, um, you know, the working from home period, let's say. Yeah, I, 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 I learned I, I don't, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would, but yeah. I learned to kind of adjust to it better. Um, well, I tried to like do little things. Came like at the start, obviously because it was stricter for everybody, I had to occupy my mind in, in different ways. And I thought I was like, because you know, you know me as well, and like I, I love playing back in any video game under the sun, and I actually did very little of that. I did a lot of doing nothing, and um, but I think it was because college. I think that was the welcome distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, I had that in the back of my mind, and I wanted to focus on that. Like, and and um, so that kind of didn't didn't help it a bit. Like, do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's 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 a tricky one. I, I feel like I did. I feel like I did lockdown wrong. I genuinely feel like I did it wrong. <laughs> like most people were like, oh yeah, I like I sat around watching series and I. I, I, you know, or some people are like, oh, I went out and I, I, I lit, I can ran, did run a marathon every day and all like that. Whereas I was kind of like, yeah, a little bit of running and 
I didn't really watch any. I didn't. I haven't watched any TV. I didn't watch any series around like that. And I feel like I kind of like. I feel like I've been cheated of my lockdown. Do you know what I mean? I should have. I feel like I've. I need to make up for it now. Like that. I've, <laughs> I did it wrong. Like do you know what I mean? Like everyone else is saying like, oh, I'm, I learned how to bake, and I was, whereas I'm like, no, like I, I did nothing. Like I, yeah, I didn't yeah. even do nothing right. Like I didn't even do it properly. Like do you know what I mean? I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm robbed of it. Like robbed myself of it. Well, how do you think? How do you think the this pandemic will have changed the working world uh, going forward? Oh, here it's going to change how the office is. The remote office is, is like people talk like, oh yeah, it's the future and it's going to creep in, but it's going to be here far quicker. I think. Like a girl in my class works on Twitter, and she's like, they're not back to work now for good. Like she's she says so she's not going back in full stop anymore. So they're they're happy with it. Like. Yeah. yeah, she could have been sacked for all I know. I don't know. She could be just <laughs> uh, money messing. No, but she said, uh, "Their the remote work is like they're advocating it nearly like you know, they're saying, yeah, like you know, if you want to work from home, if you have the means to do it, work away, like you know." So and what do you and what do you think kind of students can learn from you know from this working from home or from the pandemic? You know that'll help them uh, get ready for the working world type thing. Yeah, like self motivation is the big thing. Like it's it's keeping yourself. Being able to, to you know, be responsible without someone watching you, like, do you know what I mean? Like, and I think that that's something that you need to kind of learn. Like, there are a lot yeah. of students that are struggling with work, studying part time or studying online, etc. But, um, like, mm. think about it, you know yourself as well. Like, the amount of Zoom meetings you go into, and you're still doing the same thing and work. The only difference is that where you make your cup of tea is in your kitchen and not in the one and work. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're still emailing stuff, you're still communicating. Mm. It's it's, it's weird, like, I was only saying to someone, like, if this, if what happened, happened 10 years ago or something like that, or the, mm. and the era of MSN, like, when 2008 and stuff, 2007, like, I don't think it, it would have been, yeah, it would have been so much yeah. harder. Yeah. Like, the, the level of communication we have, like, it's like, and it's like, if you can't get someone on text, you can get them on Google Chat, if you can't get them on Google Chat, Jesus, or, or message on Instagram, like, just, there's, there's we have so many ways of communicating with people now with that people, you can yeah. kind of not ignore someone. Like it's like being at your desk, seeing someone at your desk and calling them. Do you know what I mean? You can contact yeah. them anyway. You see, but you can. No, I think that's a good point. And we had a uh, Gabriella on, yeah, uh, on yeah. what day is it? Uh, Tuesday. Got her on Tuesday, and it was kind of similar stuff, you know. And and you, and you can you can start to understand how important the self motivation is, and the independent work, and the self discipline you need to kind yeah. of thrive. We're in the online learning environment, the online working environment. So I think if any students maybe are struggling with it, uh, my advice to them would be maybe you know re- reflect on that and maybe think about their um, you know the challenges and how they can maybe work a bit better and and develop them that that discipline and they even use using technology better to uh, support themselves because that's what industry wants going forward. They want you to be able to work alone and to, um, you know, still deliver and, uh, and be productive, like, you know? Yeah. But I suppose just moving on then, uh, no, you're obviously a part-time student as well. So it'd be nice to maybe talk a little bit about that. Um, how are you getting on with the program? You're, you're starting your thesis soon then, yeah? Yeah. So I've, I've, um, I don't know how, but I got to the end of it. But, uh, oh, man. yeah, it's, it's, it's been weird. Like I, I kind of had a weird journey into in, in kind of getting into my masters because, when I finished, I finished my degree in 2012, and I was like in the back of my head, I was like, "You're doing a master's, you're doing a master's, you're doing a master's," but the cost was always a big factor for me. Like, and like for many students, it's 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 tough. So, uh, I in 2015, I went into, I got into DCU to do a master's in digital marketing, and after about two months, I dropped out. Um, it was just oh, so hard, trying to, it was just it was it was managing me time. My time management was abysmal. So I had to drop out of it, and um, I just couldn't commit to it. Like, and mm. uh, just with work and stuff like that, it was so hard. Like, so, um, and that was in uh, DCU, was it? That was in DCU, yeah. So I, I got into that, and it, it, it because I, j- I dropped out of it, it, it bothered me that I never finished it. I was like, I, I, I it was like something left, there's something left unfinished, and I was like, I, ha- I have to do it in some shape or form. I, I, I got in, like, I, I got my foot in the door somewhere. I was like, I have to keep going. So, mm. um, jump forward to 2016 like a year later and I got a job in PBS yeah. and then uh, I was like look what better time than to do it and this course came about then they developed they, I heard they were developing this course it was in the pipeline so I waited for it to kind of come about mm. and then I joined it in 2018 and uh, yeah love it I really really like the course and it's exactly what I wanted to do it's I'm yeah. learning stuff that 
I find really interesting and mm. very very relevant and and it's to what I'm what I want to do and uh, yeah it's 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 great I really love the course like it's it's, it's and what do you what do you what do you like most about it like kind of just in terms of the, the the blend of the relevant information the delivery or like you know how where the content is or what it's a mix of both like there's, there's see I, I kind of come come from a kind of creative background like I'm not a creative like but I did a degree in, in media management and I did have a diploma in radio production so um, I, 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 I'm I interested in all that kind of editing and, and production creating stuff so the course kind of marries the two like there's a lot of website design there's a lot of creative aspect to it so mm. you can kind of play around with a lot of stuff on it like um, obviously you're learning about the the kind of the, the business side of, of kind of the creative thing so like you know digital marketing is about creating and um, but it's mm. all about marketing on an online platform so we learn yeah. about how facebook ads work how you use instagram ads uh yeah. google analytics stuff like that so this is all stuff that's relevant to someone that relevant right if, now, you, yeah. if you're a small if you're a small business <clears throat> and you're creating something or if you're an artist <laughs> or whichever and you're creating stuff and you create good content to put up online that's mm. going to show people your product, and if it's good content, it's going to drive more business to you. Like so, it's okay. So I, love I suppose, that, like, so. I suppose, what's the challenges? Uh, you know, full time versus part time studying. What's the kind of? What, like, um, what's your? Pa- where, where where would you rather your know, thing lie? You know. To be honest, I'd, ra- I'd rather be full time. Yeah, and that I think I think. I'm biased in the sense that I, because I work in the college, I, I see the students and I know all the SU guys just from hanging around and stuff like that and, and even other students in the college and you look at them and go like, Gee, like you don't know how good you have it. This is your day to day. It's, it's, and I, and I, and I'm, when I, especially as I work in the college, I see looking back at my college experience, I'm like, I didn't take advantage of that as, yeah. as much as I should. I should have like jumped at everything and done everything and just threw my hand at everything and we're looking at, doing part-time i'm like god i'd love to be doing this during the day and then doing the activities at night and, do you know what i mean like it's yeah you yeah, feel yeah. kind of damn it i, I should have done more like do you know what i mean it, it's it's kind of a weird one like but uh the part-time is great because you know you can you, you, your workload is more balanced out you can stretch it out a bit better and you can you can manage your time better and you can do your assignments the weekend etc but the only thing is uh is just the tiredness like do you know what i mean it's it's it, it's a slog the days that you're in because you're into mine oh, yeah, and people think, oh yeah, you work in the college, so that's so handy. He's like, yeah, it's handy, but you're in the same building for what, twelve hours, like something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's no, hard, like, to like, but I think it's a, it's a test of the achievement and the attainment of skill that you get and knowledge, you know, because yeah. it's, it's it's not easy doing a postgrad for anyone, um, and it's a test. It, it is an endurance test, like you said, as well as a, a physical one. Um, Lucas just saying, are we on Copacabana? Lucas, we're not <laughs> Lucas yet. We're uh, we're on our way there now, bro. <laughs> Um, we're in Cobra, I'm in Cobra Cabana uh, by way of Cluny, so. <laughs> uh, just firing on to some of the questions here. Um, Gabby has asked about the radio. We're, we're going to talk about that now in a moment, Gabby. Um, uh, Hamza has said, Jordan, you look like you're about to drop the hottest uh, album of 2020. Very hyped. And any sign of Michael on your walks uh, from Connor? I haven't seen him here, have you? Come across. No, he's cl- he lives closer to you though. I think Adam. So I think oh, you, you, you're more likely to have you seen him than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose then. I just I suppose the last one or two questions just on the on your postgrad. What, what you know, you obviously dropped out of a postgrad, and you know you, you're nearly successfully completed one now. What's important? Do you think for students, anyone considering going doing your postgrad, what do you think is important for them to consider? Consider the workload because. Um, the whole thing you get kind of said to you all the time is, oh, it's a master's, it's a master's. And it is, it is a bigger workload. It's very doable. If you can do an undergrad, you can do a master's, no problem. But you have to be ready to commit to it. You can't mess around with it. And there's less, you're not, um, your, your hand isn't really held anymore, to kind of put yeah. it bluntly. You have to do a lot of self learning Obviously, the lecturers don't throw you and leave you in the lurch. They will help you. But you have yeah. to be willing to want to do you have to put in the hours you have to do the extra work i know all of us put stuff off i put stuff off to the last minute i work best when i do stuff kind of yeah. close to the deadline but yeah you, you have you have to be willing to commit to it it's not like an undergrad where you can kind of you can put everything off you have to be willing to to do do the time do the hours and get the work done 100 mm. percent. and have you have you learned anything about yourself or have you gone through an evolution you know through the postgrad do you think I feel, like or... I feel like a pokemon now um 
<laughs> no, um, but yeah, no, like I, 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 I realize my level of work I can take on, like, do you know what I mean? And even like, I'm a very kind of, once I get something done, I, I switch off then. It's like, right, that's done, park it, done, I can rest. But um, I've learned to kind of been able to use my time better, you know what I mean? Maximize my time each day and stuff like that. So if it means if I have college on this day, right, I can work out this day. Or if I've got um, a space this day, right, I can squeeze in an assignment or a bit of research or something like that. So it's just mm-hmm. maximizing your time. And that's mm-hmm. that's what I think kills something for everybody. It's just bad, bad, bad um coordination of the time like if you time manage your time well and uh, i suppose is that like something you think is really important for students going forward uh, like, like what kind of skills do you think that is going to be required for for future jobs or future you know future of, of work um it's hard to say like it, it's, it's specific to each industry i think time management is always going to be key for anyone no matter who we are or, or what you do like time management is always going to be key but just um learning your kind of your limitations as well like everyone's trying to go out there and become an it expert or learn how to code and and trying to be good at too many things like obviously you have an interest in different areas if you're going to work around no matter what sector in but like Mm -hmm. know your limitations and know you're not going to be able to know everything and but don't be afraid to try your hand at anything either like chance it and, and and see how you get on but don't don't overcommit to it either because you see a lot of people who do things and they they they're to use the term, they're, they're pissing firmly into the wind. Like they, they shouldn't be what they're doing because they, but they blag their way in. It's, it's kind of dangerous in a way because, um, I feel like it can create animosity mm-hmm. in a weird way to people. Like so, it's it's a tricky one. Like, but I say to people, just just know your limitations and but still try try doing things you might not want to do at the same time. Yeah, okay. exactly. Do you prefer having class in Angel Street or Castle House? Castle House. Oh really? Okay. Well, yeah. Noisier. Because um. I think it's because I work there. It's hard for me to say. Like, so, I mean, it's hard for me to. And Angel but, Street. Uh, yeah, Angel Street, just because I'm there all day. And, and it's not as. I don't think you it's like, as. You like breaking it up. You like, like breaking it up. And, and you know what? It, it's, it's, when, you're on the, when you're on the fourth floor, the view, especially on a day like today, if you're on the fourth floor, you can see such a nice view. Like, I love that. Like, so. Yeah. That's the, that. But then again, it's a greenhouse on a day like today as well. Like, so. Well, that's, you that's be ba- baking it alive. Like. Uh, okay. Are the rumors true that you've never once tagged into any of your classes in DBS? You have zero attendance, zero percent attendance for your time right. in DBS. So, so you I, I have, I, I don't have a student card. And that was my na- next question. You, 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 you don't have a, you don't have a DBS student card, so you can't even show us a student card. I have no student ID. I never collected. I forgot to claim, it and it just became a thing. I've never tagged in, and I. But my attendance is that like it's weird when you when you're handing in an assignment that affects your attendance. So I've like two percent attendance because I handed in a science. Oh, nice. So at least you've got so, some engagement. Yeah, but um, I, I'm, probably, I'm probably gonna hang myself now because now it's out on live. But uh, yeah, no. Well, me, me. Hopefully Sarah Sharkey doesn't see that because I know yeah. she's in charge of student engagement. I think that's gonna be happy. <laughs> uh, with that then as well. All right. But uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing that. So that's enough about kind of DBS and about your your, your program. I suppose another big part of when we have you on is talk about your radio show. So probably a fun fact about yourself that maybe not everyone knows is that you are a, a, a long-time radio presenter person. and you've got a radio person, <laughs> radio presenter, but, but, but you have your own radio slot that you've been doing for a number of years now. So uh, tell us a bit about your radio show. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's a radio station called FRQ or Freak, it's what it's called, on FM. It's, okay. It works... They work with um, Spain and 98 FM and Today FM, so it's in their building. So um, we I do a show twice a week, so Sundays and Tuesdays, um, and yeah, it's good. But it's uh, at the moment it's 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 closed down. Um, so they because of everything going on, they're not allowing kind of unnecessary people, kind of in, people into it. Yeah, so all the big stations, a lot of their main shows are being done at home. So you'll know some radio presenters actually doing their their broadcast from the kitchen and it it, it gets sent to the station and it, it yeah. plays out live so we're not allowed in we're doing some pre-records so i've done some pre-records before so there is stuff playing but we're not allowed into the building to actually use this, this system just for just because it's non-essential purely yeah. because it's non-essential so it's um, essential think, for some people man it's essential that we see you on the radio man it's essential listen tunes are for everyone tunes are essential but uh and, no, yeah. but, but what what type of music do you play in the show 
for anyone who maybe would like to tune in type thing. What what what? It's yeah. it's it's all court music. It's mostly hip hop and like dance dance music and stuff like that. So it's a it's a mix a mix of kind of they they're aiming at kind of you know fifteen to twenty five year olds. So it's like similar to Spain, like you know I mean, so similar energy, but it's just all music. There's no ads. It's just music, music, and just a bit of talk and stuff like that. So try so to bring a bit. Real stuff. Yeah, really it's good. I, I enjoy it, like, and it's got me some good kind of like I got because I worked there. I got I got to DJ at a, a longitude one year as well, so that was pretty good. Um, mm. so I got to uh, DJ at, at a it's like a VIP section. Yeah, and I got to DJ there, which is pretty good. So I got a free pass, so I didn't really care. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I was like, yeah, I'll DJ, no problem. Like, it is, yeah. But uh, no, it was good. Like that was about like, two, two, two or three years ago. But uh, did you pre-record? Did you, did, you, did you do a live set type thing? I did live set. No, I was de- I physically was DJing at it. Like, do you know what I mean? So it was oh, good. Nice. And then like the, like it wasn't like the main stage. It was like a separate section. But like it was, it was yeah. good. Like, like at the start of it, it was kind of quiet because like it was early mm. days. And then by I think by the late afternoon it was packed. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is probably the most people I've ever DJed. <laughs> like, wow, jeez, so that must have been yeah, must have been yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, intimidating enough. But like, yeah, it was good. Sure. Yeah. The good. um, and I suppose the. Would you like to be into music production? Are you happy just kind of DJing with existing music, or or, or where do you sit on that? Like a bit of both, I'd say. Because um, like I'm I'm in the process of building a, a studio in the in my room. Um, it's I I I, I have bits and bobs, but it still has needs a few more bits to kind of add to it. Like um, but yeah, um, I'd like to get into production side of things. Like um. Mm. It's it's a big commitment though. Like uh, like our cousin Rory, he's he does a lot of re- uh, music production. Like and the stuff he does is amazing. Like he's he's doing a years. So I'd love to be able to do that. Like but it's just just time. It's hard. Like so I think it's like it goes back to what I was saying. Like it's kind of cut your cloth. What's the thing? Cut your cloth for the. Like, you know what I mean? It's see yeah, exactly. So it's like I don't like I don't want to do too much. Like and I, I like you know what I mean. So I, I think the masters on as well. It's kind of exactly. Your time, like, I think yeah. once once I once I kind of get the masters behind me, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I might take up something else just to kind of occupy that time, you know what I mean? So, but definitely, I'd like to get into music production type. Do of you thing, have right? a special radio voice? Um, I've been told yes and no. Some people say I've I don't have the the spin kind of south side or hey, how are you type of thing. Like, but I've got the. Uh, <laughs> but I've been told I sound quite posh on the radio because I've tried to. They say some stations not freak. They don't say, but when you're doing demos and stuff like that. They say neutralize your voice. So if you come from the country, they they tell you to kind of get yeah, rid of your bullshit. how's it going? How's it going down? Oh no, hi! Tell you to get rid of all that type of stuff. They want you to kind of be a flat kind of Irish accent, like do you know what I mean. So I do a little bit of that, but I don't like doing it. But then again, you don't hear how's it going? What's the story on the radio that often? Like think yeah, about yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? So you have to kind of be yeah, I do with it. I, I I do. I actually have a link. If you, I have a SoundCloud, it's Crowder Fifteen as well. If you go onto my SoundCloud, you can actually hear some of my old, my demos, and they're uh, you can get a giggle at that. Like so, we might um, share them on our on our on our socials um, after yeah. this and uh, give people a little a little talent. Or uh, maybe some of your more recent stuff, if you'd like to maybe uh, tune into some of your some of your uh, you know your sessions or some of your slots, that'd be cool. Like you know, some of some of them are from my SoundCloud as well. Like I mean, it's just I just put them up just from time to time just to kind of say, look, this is this is this is where I'm at. Like do you know what I mean? But uh, I must update it. Actually, it's it's not. Uh, it's not recent or anything like that, so yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Um, and who's the most famous person you've interviewed? Um, famous person I've ever interviewed. Anyone? I'm trying to think, never actually even have like something. That's um, awesome. No, I haven't. I've met. I've. I. I. The only time I've actually been around a proper celebrity, I was in a. I was an extra in a in a in a film called Breakfast on Pluto years ago, okay. and. Uh, Killian Murphy was in it, and oh. he sat, he sat um, two seats ahead of me in one of the scenes. So it was weird. I got to, like, and this is before this is before he did Batman. This is before he did uh, like Peaky Blinders. So he was he yeah. was he was well known in Ireland, but he wasn't like huge. But what's funny is the there was a young fella, he's Irish young fella who was in scenes with us, and he kept going to us. Oh, I'm going, I'm going to be in the new Batman movie. Well, Killian Murphy was in it as well. Like, but he goes, I'm going to be in the new Batman movie. And he was only small. We were like, oh, yeah, whatever, like laughing at him. And turns out he was, and he was in Batman Begins, this kid was, but he's the, um, people might know him, he's from Game of Thrones, he was like the king, Joffrey, I think his name was. But he was, he was there, but he was like giving it the large one to everyone, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a big actor. And we were like, all right, pal, whatever. And then, so lo, and behold, lo and behold, he was like, he's a, he's a fairly famous actor. And I was like, so I was like, oh, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> right, um, let's talk about your shoe collection. 
I can't. <laughs> let, 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 let the listeners or the viewers who are tuning in, how many Me shoes? What? How Me many what? pairs? How many? The state of them. How, <laughs> how many pairs of shoes do you have? Um, in you boxes know? or? Yeah, Jordan keeps the shoes in boxes. Like he's no, a I stack keep right. So I have stacks and stacks of box. Only time I get a pair of runners, I keep it in the box. And um, I've thirty. I've 31 pairs of, of runners in boxes and I've like another, say, maybe eight more that aren't in boxes that I've had for a long time now. But I'm always going to keep. So, yeah. If anyone on. has any opinions on that, if you think that's the best thing ever or the worst thing ever, do uh, let us know. <laughs> but um, why, why, why do you keep them in boxes? Does it keep them cleaner or do you just like to sack you, them and have them in it boxes? Keeps, it, it actually does keep them cleaner. Um, like I see mm-hmm. a lot of people, people always say, like, I don't, avoid muck around like that I wear I wear all of them that's the thing I recycle them there is a thing with kind of sneaker heads you want to call it that that you have your rotation so your rotation is kind of four or five runners that you would wear for like a few weeks like you just and then you you change it up then so you'd have you kind of forget you have the other ones and you put new ones in and so it's called the record rotation so you at the moment the ones I have on there are me rotation so <laughs> yeah that's that's the game so but, uh, you're yeah, just no, going to keep going. But see, you're at the age now. You're not growing out your shoes anymore, Jordan. You know, so like you're kind of. This is it. I can afford so, to buy new ones. But it's big. But it's just, big. It's it's big industry. Like there's a, for example, like Nike brought out a collaboration with Ben and Jerry's recently. And, the ice cream. Yeah, the ice cream. They brought out a pair of Nike SBs, and uh, they were just skateboarding runners. And they, you you can only get win them by a raffle. So you enter into a raffle, whichever website sells them, and if you win, they invite you to buy them. So, um, so I think there's a pair, they were for sale, resale. So this is people who won them, bought them for like, say, 150 euro. And then they resell them online for, yeah. I think they were going for three or four grand. For a pair of shows, look me. Pair of shows. And, them, so let's... and people are buying it. Like, sure, uh, Travis Scott, who's the, the rapper, um, he has a pair, he's had a few collaborations with Nike. He's a pair that are releasing tomorrow. Um, so they're these ones, the ones I'm wearing. So they're these Nikes, which is the, they're fit for the bin, man. They're stylish, they're class. but they're basically um they're going to um they're releasing the pair collaboration he's doing, but they're those, but they're like a kind of a brownie color, like okay. So it's no, it's 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 good. Uh, like and people go nuts them, so they'll go on, they'll go for sale online probably for about a thousand euro. It just brings me to, to I suppose the next part. Then I know we had a legendary trip uh, about two years ago now to to Los Angeles, and uh, <laughs> I I remember um. Fond memories of that trip, me and you, and uh, we went to some stores there where the shoes are bubble wrapped and worth like five, six, seven, eight hundred euro- dollars or whatever, and uh, yeah. it's just crazy. But uh, what was your best memory when we were in LA, uh, Jay? Um, geez, it's hard to say. Probably, probably the day we hiked the Hollywood sign yeah, because cool, we didn't. It? Because we didn't. We knew we wanted to try and do it, but we didn't plan it. We were up on. So this is going to sound really like, oh, we were up on Melrose, which is that kind of all those cool shops are on. And we were just, we didn't, like, we weren't buying and we were just wandering. And, we're, and it was kind of an overcast day, but I remember it was really hot. And we were like, what are we going to do for the rest of the day? And then the weather kind of broke. It was like this then. Yeah, and cool. you had mentioned, oh, there's a way to hike the Hollywood sign to the top. And I was like, mom, let's go do it. And you were like, Ruby. And I was like, yeah, let's go do it. And I and remember we'd no, we, we'd no water, no food. <laughs> no water, no plans. We didn't know how long it was going to take. We just, and it ended up being what, two hours or something? Yeah. I was just, remember that random, some random fella that tagged along with us? Followed us, like, yeah. I'm still mates with him on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you know all them mad tattoos, remember that? He was a little. He had his nipples pierced and everything. He had the warts, <laughs> like, and he was like, and I was like, I remember I was looking going, is he going to put his top on or what? Like, I mean, kind of weirded out, like. He was in town from Vegas and he was like, he wanted to hook up with us for the day and all. I was like, yeah, mate, best of luck with that sailor. Yeah, he like, I don't, like, he, like we, he just followed, he was on his own, like, it was just bizarre, like. But that was, that was pretty good. And then, uh, oh, we went to Tijuana. That was actually, that was, yeah, that was, just, that was eventful. <laughs> that was, it was just, it was just a mad place. It was weird kind of seeing that divide in the state. Like, I know it's another country, but it's so close to San Diego. Mm. But it's it's the difference in, 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 in class. Like, I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing. Would, like, you, but, would, you, would you live in, in, in LA? Yeah. You see living over there, yeah. Like, yeah. That, that, that shop we went into, you were saying about the shrink wrap, the bubble wrap and the shoes. 
they've they're called round two and i'm watching all their youtube videos recently and it's just like it's just insane like do you know what i mean like and like they're just all wheeling and dealing all big brands like supreme and nike and all these things and you just like they just do that all day and they get to live in la i was like that is insane like it's classic wow. and um, what, did, what, what, what do you think is the biggest difference from obviously uh, you know between los angeles and Dublin, like i suppose culturally or whatever like what was what do you think is the biggest I, obviously, I, obviously the physical environment and the weather and stuff yeah too. the weather's the big thing but like the main thing which is a bit more of a negative is that like they're not as people aren't as don't feel as welcoming like it's it's like it's a welcome like they're, they're, everyone's nice everyone's polite and all like that that's that's fine but i remember one of the days we were parking our car and this weird rules in every street about where how long you can park for where you can park all this stuff and i remember we just asked some guy we're like oh can we park here and he was like oh, i don't know and you're like whereas if that was in dublin you said someone's looking to park here and they're like yeah yeah it, it, you can park for this time that time it's two euros you need money like are you okay like people would like offer you the clothes off the money. back and People give you know me money. I mean? <laughs> well, I look on it, you know what I mean? It's the beard. People think I need the money, like, do you know what I mean? So, I probably think I'm trying to rob them, Jordan, with that. <laughs> yeah. But there, there but, uh, is a difference. And you were in regardless. Thailand last year. You went on a, on, a, on, a, on a trip to Thailand last year. What was that like? That was, uh, yeah, that was that was good. Uh, that was, I booked it last minute for my girlfriend's birthday. And, uh, like, I knew I wanted to do, I was supposed to go to, we were supposed to go to Greece. And then that was working out really expensive. And then when I actually checked it against going to, Southeast Asia, go to Thailand. It was like cheaper. So I mean, it's no no brainer. Like you're trying to go to a tropical place or a place in Europe. And I was like, so we booked went to went to Thailand. But uh, yeah, it was it was mad. Like I went to Dubai for a day and then went to Thailand. But Thailand's amazing. We we're there for six days or something. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was good. We went uh, went out to PP Island, which is where they filmed the they filmed the beach with Leonardo mm. DiCaprio. So that was that was pretty good. Like, but it's uh. Yeah, it's my place. I'd, I'd recommend it to anyone. They um, swam with elephants and all that, didn't you? Yeah, we went to an elephant sanctuary. That was that was that was actually mad because it's it's kind of hard because over there they they use elephants for logging in some places. So you have to be careful where you go because some places they let you ride in the elephants, which is not it's bad. Like it's it's you're kind of contributing to that industry. So yeah. this is a place where these are rescue. They're all rescue elephants. So like they okay. just all they do is just <laughs> live the life. It was great, amazing, great experience. Okay. All good stuff, and there's obviously no more trips planned, unfortunately, but. Uh... Oh, yeah. No more trips. So I usually go to a beta every year, at least once a year for the last few years. But uh, that's all kaput for the moment. So I'm hoping that if the restrictions. I think Spain are looking to remove restrictions. Okay. Um, I might go in October. Um, for the last week, but we'll see what happens. Like, okay. um, we're kind of coming we're not towards the end. I, I've got some quick fire questions for you now, Jordan. So uh, you you have to answer them kind of fast. So there's no uh, there's no uh, thinking. I guess like, you know you just have to <laughs> you have to get into. It. But I've I, I have a question first, and I know Lisa's just joining us there, and I know Lisa's going to agree with me on this. When are we going to see you in your noodle bags uh, out in Port Marnie? Oh. That's a day like today. When is that's what all the students want to see? When when are you coming for a swim? In the bag. When is the rig going to come out? The only thing is, I've I've had the same pair for the last while, and I feel like I need to upgrade them. And I've been eyeing the Noodle Bags website. They have a, a leopard print one, and I think okay. that would really, really like. I think they. I need a new pair to kind of break out. But I do. I I, I think the, the Noodle Bags need need to be busted out again. For anyone that doesn't know, Noodle Bags are like these speedos that we have, like you know. So uh, my friend on the on the on the swimwear company called uh, Noodle Bags. So. Uh, but I'm hoping to get Jordan out for a swim. He's too much of a <laughs> he's too much of a wuss to come out and uh, jump in the water. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll get him out here soon, like you know. But um, but yeah, so we've got about ten minutes left. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe just about that. But so we've got a few quick fire questions for you now, Jordan. All right. So yeah, um, you know how it goes quick fire. You can't think too much. You have to kind of just say what I'm good at that. Into your head. I'm very good at that. Not not being able to think or just saying. Yeah, not going to think too much. <laughs> so a couple of questions see how it goes and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there so if you have any questions uh, now is your chance I suppose fire it into the, into the comments box below and, just, don't, uh, just don't, don't, don't ask me for an update in your application don't, I'm not going to yeah, answer that <laughs> <laughs> be a good opportunity for them to do it actually That's very so true. Um, it's lunch time now if you could buy any type of food right now what would you buy? chicken filler roll Chicken filler roll, really? Chicken filler roll, yeah, it's the king. It's the ultimate mayonnaise lunch. Mayonnaise or guy? Mayonnaise and grated cheese. Maybe less if, if I'm feeling, if I, if I want to be healthy. <laughs> okay, what colours are toothbrush if you have them? It's kind of, it's white and grey, but I think it used to be all white. <laughs> <laughs> I might need a new one. 
Okay, so if you met Dirty Michael right now, where would you take him? And you, you obviously can't take him to Calesta because... Out the house for a few whistlers. Out the house. <laughs> <laughs> Is that by his choice or your choice? No, I'll be going out the house. He can just get a lift out. I'll, get, I'll drop him to Calesta afterwards. To Calesta. So, Connor, if you are still alive... Uh, a few whistles out on Hoax, that's it. That's where he's off, okay? <laughs> um if you if you if you were given a yacht, what would you name it? Um the SSS because I only have S on a stencil. <laughs> the SSS. The SSS. This <laughs> Okay. Only uh, S on it, yeah. <laughs> okay, what celebrity annoys you the most? I think I know the answer to this. Um Oh, what's that fucking easy yep. that does the... That James Corden. James I knew you were going to say him. I yeah, I can't stand him. him. I can't stand him at all. Like Him okay. him and him and uh, Keen Toomey, that Irish guy. Can't stand him. <laughs> can't stand him. Right, if you were running as a local councillor, what would your campaign slogan be? Um, Two euro for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine saying that on the thing, like, you know. Two euros so everyone can get a scratch card. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so finish the sentence, right? My lifelong dream is to... Um, stay in DBS forever. <laughs> <laughs> as a staff member or as a student? Students. Okay. Be, be, like you, be like you, Adam, and what, what's it, Van, Van Wilder. Van Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you could ring Michael D. Higgins right now, what would you say to him? I'd say... Open what would you up talk to him, bro? I say, hey, Michael. I say, can you open up the polls, please? I'm missing, <laughs> I'm missing daily, especially on a weekend like this again. Okay. No, have, I, you, have you ever tried to do something that you're really bad at, but you've done it anyway? And what was it? Life. Life. <laughs> Life in general. <laughs> so okay. I'm I think I'm good at, but I'm kind of stuck with it. So. Right. What's the What's a really big advantage of being tall? Um. Being able to finally, do you know where they put, no, no in the shop, no where the, those certain types of magazines are on the high shelf? <laughs> I can yeah. reach them now. You can, yeah, you, you, you can look at them without having to, you know. You, I can look, look at them, look yeah. Them. Like, at, at and I'm, all, I'm, also, I'm also not allowed back in Spar again, so like that's, that, that's the flip side of it. So. <laughs> and what's one advantage of being really, really small? So um, like, like Rory's height. <laughs> um... I don't know, actually. Probably have to kick people in the shins, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, actually. That's, that's, a very, that's a very weird question. Like, in a, in a good way, weird question. Like, caught me kick off guard. People in, are you a shin kicker yourself? Okay. Shin okay. kicker. Okay. People, and, don't lot, expect, people don't expect you to do something. That's what it is. People, and then you, you always leave people surprised when, cause, when they're, when they're small. Don't, people probably don't trust you if you're, if you're a small. Like, do you get me? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, how long does it take you to get ready in the morning? 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Is that bed to door type thing? Well, you're that's, bed to bed. Bu- that's, bed to, that's bed to bus. Bed to bus. Okay, well. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I've never been done the night before, yeah. Okay. What's the lowest grade you've ever gotten in a subject? Like in like like we, secondary school? Like we're talking bad my standards or bad Colorado no, Clava standards? Wow. Well, like, that, that's that, that's good standards. in his regard. Like, now, what's um, the worst grade you've ever gotten? I've gotten four percent in, in, in an Irish exam before. Four. I don't know how, but anyway. I think. I think I got something like like that. I think I got like two percent or something like that. I think I wrote my name or something like that. I think it was in one of my mocks or something. I can't remember. If you could choose a nickname for yourself, what would you give yourself? Um, I don't know. I'll put. See, a lot of people say. Do you remember uh, what's his name? Mankind, the wrestler. Yeah. So what was his name? What cactus Jack? What was his name again? What was the name uh, of that wrestler again? Mankind. Uh, there you go. Because I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's your favorite superhero and why? Oh, it has to be Iron Man. Iron Man, yeah, he's a rich, man. rich, rich fella with a metal suit. Like, what more could you want? What's your favorite thing to do during the summer? What's your favorite activity? Um, on holidays. Huh? No, like on holidays. I'm just, no, just being, just being out. Just being able to go out during the day and just sit around doing nothing. I love that. Yeah. I mean, out with people and stuff like that. I love that. If you could make a movie about your life, who would play you? Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to think now. It has to be someone funny and someone 
good looking at the same time. I don't, <laughs> don't want to do myself the door thing because I'm going to show you. Like, it would probably end up being someone like Jack Black or something like that, but really, it would probably have to be someone like that. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Colin Farrell, because it's only because we have, I have similar eyebrows to him, but you'd have that's to... True. That's true. I, I, that's overestimating it. <laughs> if you, if anyone has any suggestions of who you think would play Jordan in in life in a story about Jordan uh, in a biopic, uh, please let us know. Um, <laughs> if you if you had to be any flavor of ice cream, what would you be and why? Um, probably strawberry. I like I like, I like strawberry flavored that. Okay, and you've got a little pips in it and stuff like that. Okay. A little pips, me and all that. But it's always funny. No one knows that. I've seen this online. Strawberries look look like they should taste nice in the what they do. That is true. Yeah. Strawberries look like they're gonna taste unreal, and you eat them, and they're like they just they kind of taste like a little bit like strawberry. They're yeah. not strong strawberry taste off strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> just an observation. Don't mind me. Are you a morning person or a nighttime person? Jeez, I actually don't know. Neither. I can function at both. I can function. I I, I can function and not function at both. Yeah, um, I pro- probably more of an probably more of a nighttime person. Um, like I like working out in the evening. I hate working out in the morning, so I'd say night time. What's your favorite hobby? Um, doing nothing. No, uh, prob- prob- probably doing radio stuff, doing editing and production type stuff, or just playing games and stuff like that. Like a good the suggestion there. Yeah, sorry, a good suggestion. Seth Rogen from Gabby. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. <laughs> the guy from Superbad. Yeah, that's a good show, Gabby. I like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's um, very accurate. Shaving this beard off now. I'm shaving. <laughs> Um, what's the strangest thing you've ever, you've ever eaten? Um, I don't know, actually, because I wouldn't eat like octopus. Or in the Thailand or... No, I actually, I actually didn't. Surprisingly enough, I actually wanted and I couldn't find any place that would. No, uh, pr- probably uh, just something in the canteen. Oh, that... actually, do you know what I ate actually recently? We were, <laughs> we were at a, I remember the award thing we were at a while ago before Christmas? Yeah, um, all the staff, and I was at a table with Andrew Conlon Trance, um, executive dean. He, yeah. he 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 got executive dean, so the head honcho of DBS, and he got a plate of cheese as dessert, and he offered me that I want to try some, and he had some on a fork, and he was gonna like put it onto my plate so I could take a bit, and me being a stupid idiot, put my hand out to grab it off his fork. Now this this is like blue cheese, so it's like cream, and I went to grab it off his fork. So you imagine someone like passing you butter on a fork, and you just go and grab it with your hand. It was equivalent to me doing that. And everyone at the table is looking at me, you know, half laughing and half looking at me, going, "You're, you're, a, you're, you're, you're a moron! Like you're a godshit!" Like, <laughs> and even Andrew kind of Trent was like, he could, he couldn't breathe. He was laughing that much at me. He was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> oh god! Right, finish the sentence. When I dance, I look like Seth Rogen by all accounts. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Um, what do you, what do you, uh, what, what do you shop for most online? Um, runners <laughs> of two I'm looking at the moment so I might be buying them later so. <laughs> what's your favourite movie quote um, if this bus goes over 50 miles an hour it's going to explode <laughs> <laughs> if you're stranded on a tropical island what, what two things would you bring with you um, something to play music with that, that I would play no matter what and um, something to drink, something nice to drink. Okay. If Dublin made their own Mount Rushmore, what people would you put on it? If you had, if you had the choice, um, how many people can I put on it? Three, three. Okay. Um, or Dev. Right. Oh, wow. Dorothy Michael. Oh, wow. And probably I uh, well, I'll put Michael D in there as well. But what? <laughs> Triple threat. And who would be in the middle? Who would be in the middle? I would have to be R. Devon between the two of them. <laughs> that, that's a that's a serious that's, that's a questionable that's, sandwich there, like you know. They're literally, they're they are the physical embodiments of R. Dev's two personalities. <laughs> <laughs> they're all the same height. <laughs> they're all the same height. They're two old dirty men and they're both like just like not dirty men, but one is and then the other one's just a really good law abiding person and the other one is just the botry. Yeah. That's all. They're, they're our devs too, personalities. Oh lord! Well, look, we've got about we've got thirty nine seconds remaining. Can this close out after now? But uh, Jordan, it's been an absolute honour to have you on. Uh, thanks very much for all your insights into into working from home, into life in DBS, and 
uh, your own passion as well, including radio and so on. And yeah. I am a bit worried about some of the answers you gave during the quick fire round, but uh, so anyway, I. that's Tel um, I, uh, I, I imagine, I imagine me, uh, me, me P forty five is in the post now. So I imagine so. Yeah, I yeah. imagine so. Um, well, thanks very much. I've only quick shout. You have ten seconds. Just shout out to Ardev. That's it. <laughs> that's See you in the.